Jean Hardy of Crafty Individuals and welcome to our first ever YouTube video tutorial. Um, Malcolm's behind the camera, so Hi. hello Malcolm. Hi everyone. That's my business partner and um, we both have a company called Crafty Individuals which is you can find us at www.craftyindividuals.co.uk. Today I'm going to show you as it's our first ever video uh, we thought we'd start at the beginning and show you how to mount up one of our unmounted red rubber stamps, how to ink it up and how to use it. Or at least that's the way I would do it. Um, as I said, we were going to today show you how you would go about um, mounting up and using one of Crafty Individual's red rubber unmounted stamps. You'll get them in a packet like this. They've got the image on the front along with the uh, reference number for the stamp. All the stamps now have names as well uh, on the website. And if you go on our website, it's www.craftyindividuals.co.uk and you'll find all the stamps on there and all our other products, dyes and masks and um, paper products. So I'm just going to start by taking this out of the packet, two seconds, and then you're going to mount it up on something. Now you can actually just use them like this if you want, some people do. You could uh, just put some Pritt stick on the back here and Pritt stick it onto your acrylic block and just use it like that. But it is better and you will get a better impression if you mount it up first on some sort of stamp cushioning. Um, we have two types on the site now. We have uh, Klingon, which is the one we've had for a long time, and now we have a, a Styx 2 variety. The Styx 2 is slightly firmer, as not everybody likes the, the, the slightly softer variety of the, of the Klingon. So I'll now mount up uh, this stamp for you. This is a very easy stamp to mount up because it's um, just oblong, almost a square, and you want to just cut out a piece out of your mounting form just as it comes out of the packet just roughly like this with some Teflon scissors the Teflon's good because it uh, stops everything getting stuck up with the sticky stuff that comes on the, um, the stamp cushioning okay so you've cut it roughly out now you want to take the backing off. Now this is the ultra sticky side. And then you're just going to place the wrong side of your rub stamp on top of that like that. Okay. Press it firmly down all over. And then you want to trim. Again using your Teflon scissors. These are a variety we've got in that are quite inexpensive. And we got, we're selling them on our website as well. In the must have section. And then you just want to cut carefully around as close to the image as you possibly can without damaging it, of course. Like so. So now you've trimmed your rubber stamp out as close to the image as you could get. This would work in the same way for our element stamps, such as this one. Um, what you would do in this case is mount the whole thing onto your piece of, of mount foam. Cut the piece around, mount the whole thing on and then cut each, or how it was designed to cut each element out individually. Some people use it as a whole but I would suggest you cut each element out once you've mounted it on the foam. Again, cut as close as you can to the image, right in so that... Um, all you're going to get printing is the image. If you don't cut as close as you can, you may get some shadow effects around your stamped image. And now I've cut it out closely. I'm just going to peel the backing off the, um, the foam itself and then the foam will self-cling to an acrylic block. So if you turn it up that way, press that down hard and then that's there straighten it up a bit if you want that's there on on your acrylic block ready to use right I'm going to show you now how to stamp this up just using um, a straightforward black archive link this is also on the website this is our 
Ranger permanent ink. So this is really good for basic stamping. Now the way I do it, which I'm not saying is the only way, but this is the way I do it. I take my stamp pad like that and then I rub it all over the new image there. This just gives a coat. Then I will pat it all over with the ink and you pat it until you're sure that your whole stamp is covered completely with ink. At this point you'll be able to see that the ink is wet and shiny on every part of the image. I'm just going to stamp it up now onto some um, plain cream card. We also sell this on the website and it's very good for small detailed images. It's not so good for great blocks of colour but it's great for stamps like this. So you place that on top of your card, press all over, you can stand up and do this if it helps. Press as hard as you can but don't move the stamp around and then pick it up and you'll have a nice clear image there. Now you can colour this with watercolours or any other colouring method that you want to. Although if you're going to use alcohol ink pens you'd be better using um, memento inks because they don't move around when you apply alcohol inks. This one would move a little bit. So that's your image ready to use um, on your card or whatever else you want to use it on. Right, so you've, you've done your nice um, black, plain black stamping and now it's good to just give your stamp a little wipe. I'm just using a baby wipe which is quite sufficient um, for the needs at this point. Just give it a clean and then you would wait for that to dry off a bit or give it a quick blast with a heat tool just to dry it before using it again. Okay, and then it just peels off the acrylic block. I'll just use a dry one now because now I'm going to show you um, how to do a little bit of coloured stamping just for fun. So again, I'm going to place this on my acrylic block. This is just the same stamp, only a dry version. Press it down, and you can press it like that to secure it. And this time I'm going to colour it with um, some small dewdrop ink pads. We also sell these on the site. They're in the must-have section under stamp pads. And uh, they're a good quality ink and they're great for doing some multicolours on your stamping. So start with your lightest colour first and decide where you're going to have the lighter colour. I'll go for it at the top. Again, rub it gently all over the area you want to colour and just pat it. These are very, these are brand new stamp pads so they're very inky at the moment. So I'm just going to colour it there. As I said, start with the lightest colour and then move to your darker colours so you don't contaminate your ink pads that way. So then we'll go to the middle part, give it a little bit of colour and then pat it all over again like that. Hopefully that's enough on there. Oops, wrong one. Cover that up again. Always keep your stamp pads covered and then they'll serve you for a long time. Ink off my fingers, and then I'm going to the the final colour, which is the darkest blue, and I'm going to rub that over this end bit here at the bottom, and then ink it up again, pat it all over. And there we are; it's ready to use. Put the top back on that. Right again. This time I'll use the white variety of the very smooth card that we sell. Turn that over again, place it down onto the card, press all over again, Don't move, not moving the stamp at all, but press it nice and hard so that you get every detail in there. And lift it up and there's your resulting image. Um, we also have a new range now that we've just added to the website. Uh, these are designer rubber stamps designed by Alice Palace. 
and she does um, illustrations for greetings cards in a, an unusual job but she's kindly agreed to do some designing for us and this is one of her stamps which is called Crown Bunnies. Um, again it comes as the unmounted red rubber and here I've already mounted a couple up, I've used that one and uh, I'm just going to quickly stamp one of these onto some uh, patterned paper just to show you that stamping also looks good on patterned paper. I'm going to use one of the sheets um, out of our um, Shades of Summer book. Uh, there's lots of nice sheets in here but if you go for one of the plainer ones like these at the back uh, they're very good for stamping on. The paper's lovely quality for stamping on. So if I take this one I'm just going to use um, a section of the paper. So I'm going to pop the bunny onto there. And this isn't quite the right size but it'll do fine. Press that onto there so it self clings to your block. And then ink it up the same way as we did the other one. So I'm going to rub it gently all over and then I'm just going to pat it's wet and shiny with ink. And then take the stamp and find a suitable piece of the paper and press it down onto there. Again make sure you press it all over but without moving the stamp. If you move it you'll get a blurry image. If you keep it still you should get a nice crisp image. So there we are pressed it well all over then when you lift it up there's your Alice Palace bunny ready to cut out and use and then you'll simply take your scissors and just cut it out. I'll just show you a, a few projects where stamping has been used as the focal image. Um, here I have one with uh, the bunny that's been stamped, cut out and then put onto a background then here's another Alice Palace image. This is the British Bulldog. I love him. <laughs> um, and he's been stamped onto background paper, framed again on background paper, and a very simple card made that way. And finally, this is a completely different stamp. This is the Parisian Lady, and it's just showing how stamping can be incorporated as part of a, a whole project. Thank you very much for watching this video tutorial today. Hope you've enjoyed it and hope you'd like to have a look at our products which you'll find all of the things I've been using today at www.craftyindividuals.co.uk. Thank you.